good morning or good afternoon, uh, depending on where you are joining us from. My name is Stan Blade. I'm Dean of the Faculty of Agricultural Life and Environmental Sciences here at the University of Alberta. A faculty that you will see connects agriculture to food, to nutrition, to health. Uh, and we're very excited about the announcement that's coming up uh, this morning. I'd like to start by acknowledging that the University of Alberta is located on Treaty 6 territory. We respect the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. I'd also like to extend a welcome to our special guests and speakers today, to Mr. Matt Bowman, Chair of the Beef Cattle Research Council, to the Honorable Dan Hayes, along with his wife, Kathy, to President Bill Flanagan, the President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Alberta, to Dr. Spencer Proctor, the Interim Chair of the Department of Agricultural, Food and Nutritional Sciences, and of course, to Dr. Glaze Medeiros da Silva, the inaugural BCRC Hayes Chair in Beef Production Systems. And of course, to everyone else joining us today, welcome. This is an historic day for the University of Alberta and the Faculty of Agricultural, Life and Environmental Sciences. For more than a century, the University of Alberta has been a global leader in creating solutions for global challenges in agriculture, nutrition, the environment and human ecology. Our incredible donors have once again stepped forward to make all of this happen and today is no different. Just as a reminder, we will have a Q&A with uh, uh, our new colleague uh, at the end of this session. So please uh, feel free to start making questions, uh, putting questions together, whether you wanna ask uh, uh, verbally or whether you want to put them in the chat box, which we will be monitoring. Now it's my honor to introduce our first speaker. Bill Flanagan is the 14th president and vice chancellor of the University of Alberta. He was born and raised in Alberta and was most recently Dean of the Faculty of Law at Queen's University. Bill has an extensive record of leadership in post-secondary education and in HIV AIDS research. He is now leading a major program of academic and administrative restructuring at the University of Alberta. At this time, I would like to invite Bill to make our special announcement. Uh, welcome, Bill. Thank you, Stan. And it is my great pleasure today to announce a significant investment that will advance our province's biggest agriculture industry. Thanks to a combined gift of $3 million from the Beef Cattle Research Council, as well as the Honorable Dan Hayes and his wife, Kathy, the University of Alberta has created a faculty position focused entirely on beef production. To the BCRC and the thousands of ranchers who support it, thank you. Your investment in the chair in beef production systems will lead to advances that will directly benefit your business and build an even stronger market for Canadian beef cattle. And to Dan and Kathy, thank you for supporting the University of Alberta research as we work with the cattle industry to increase economic and environmental sustainability. I also want to recognize McDonald's Restaurants of Canada and Cargill for their gifts toward this chair position. Thank you for your investment in research that will not only improve the sustainability of a vital agricultural industry, but will increase consumer confidence. And today, these gen or together, these generous gifts will support the position over the next 10 years. And to Dr. Silva, welcome to Alberta and welcome to the University of Alberta. Your work will build on a long tradition of exceptional beef research at our institution, research that has made Alberta a world leader in cattle production. Paving the way is the research of visionaries like Professor Emeritus of Agriculture and uh, Roy Berg. In the mid-1950s, Dr. Berg was looking for ways to make cattle more resilient and productive. His proposal was a controversial one, to cross-breed cattle. Although many were skeptical, with the support of the Department Head of Animal Science and funding from the provincial government, he built a cattle breeding facility two hours northeast of Edmonton to test his hypothesis. And after a decade of research, Berg proved the skeptics wrong. He showed that crossbreeding improved production by 40%. Roy Berg's once outrageous idea is now the norm the world over. Dr. Berg sadly passed away in 2012, but his important work continues on the Roy Berg Kinsella Research Ranch east of Edmonton. That ranch is also the home to a herd of Hayes converter cattle 
uh, Canada's first breed of cattle, which was developed by Harry Hayes, father of Dan Hayes. Dan and his family generously donated the herd to the University of Alberta in 2015. And Alberta's more than 18,000 cattle producers have worked hard to make this province the Canadian leader in beef production. Dr. Silva's work will be instrumental in helping them tackle the many priorities for the industry. And these include increasing the efficiency of production, which will boost competitiveness on global markets, improving the quality of forage and feed additives, making new advances in animal health and genetics, and reducing greenhouse gas emissions from beef production, conserving and stewarding rangelands, and helping producers to be resilient in an increasingly uncertain world. Half of Dr. Silva's time will be devoted to research and the rest split between teaching and building links with our partners, including Alberta's beef producers. The chair in beef production systems will be another example of something our university does best, building strong relationships between scientists and industry, translating research into practical solutions. The challenges in our world are many, but the solutions are all within our grasp, thanks to the promise of research. For more than 100 years, the University of Alberta has moved great ideas forward, transforming their discoveries and innovations for society. These advances have helped build social, cultural, and economic prosperity for our province, and this has helped secure its place on the world stage. As this pandemic has demonstrated, our world is more connected and more fragile than ever. Just as a virus can crisscross the globe in a matter of weeks, the issue of globalization and trade, climate change, labor markets, and changing industries like energy and agriculture, they affect us all. So thank you to our funding partners. The chair in beef production systems will continue our leadership in economically, environmentally, and socially sustainable beef production. Benefits to Alberta and Western Canada will include lower beef costs, more locally produced products, increased consumer confidence, lower greenhouse gas emissions, as well as enhanced land conservation and stewardship. So once again, to the Beef Cattle Research Council and the thousands of ranchers who support it, and to Dan and Kathy Hayes, thank you for joining us as partners in innovation. Together, we will build a brighter future. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bill. Uh, certainly appreciate your words and what an incredible gift. Uh, uh, from the Beef Cattle Research Council, uh, of course, from Senator Dan and, and Kathy Hayes, uh, as well as from our partners with Cargill and McDonald's Restaurants of Canada. We're just so grateful. We're very pleased uh, to welcome you as partners uh, with Dr. Silva and our faculty as we strengthen our beef industry. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Matt Bowman, Chair of the Beef Cattle Research Council, to say a few words. Uh, Matt, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Blade. Uh, what a great day for the beef industry in Canada. On behalf of the farmers and the ranchers across Canada that the Beef Cattle Research Council are honored to represent, we are very pleased to share in today's announcement of the BCRC Hayes Chair in Beef Production Systems. This fills a critical gap in the Canadian beef research capacity and expertise. With a greater capacity to conduct systems-based research to support the cow-calf sector, the Canadian beef industry will continue to advance its leadership in sustainable beef production. We rely on science-based information and evidence to continually support practical improvements and respond to emerging issues. This new chair is proudly funded in part by the beef cattle producers through the Canadian Beef Cattle Checkoff Investment. The BCRC and others in the beef industry are look forward to working closely with the chair to deliver results that reduce cow-calf producers' costs while improving public confidence. The chair's work enables further progress in achieving target outcomes in the National Beef Research Strategy and Technology Transfer Strategy, with a focus on things like aligning seasonal forage supply and grazing practices with ongoing cattle nutritional needs to optimize reproductive rates and longevity. Cow-calf producers will have access to the practical and the economical information they need to adapt and to thrive. 25% of the chair's role dedicated to leadership and extension work, producers can be assured that critical research isn't just completed and published in peer review journals and sitting on a shelf. The results will be communicated to them in meaningful ways so they can use it to improve their management and their operations and their bottom line. 
We're also thrilled that students interested in anything from carbon capture and grazing lands to cattle DNA can now learn from an excellent professor who looks at animal and range productivity with an eye to improving the whole system. We thank and commend the Faculty of Agriculture, Life and Environmental Sciences for their industry engagement and true partnership as we work together to develop this chair's position. We look forward to continuing in this partnership as we go through, as we move forward in an ongoing advisory role. Over the years, as BCRC has worked to identify and fund research projects of priority to the Canadian beef industry, we recognize that research in some areas was not possible just due to a lack of expertise. So we developed a specific pillar of funding focused on establishing research chairs through a competitive bidding process, ensuring that only the strongest proposals came to the table. Today marks the announcement of the second research chair funded by the BCRC at a Canadian institution. The future of the Canadian beef sector is bright when families like the Hayes, academic research institutions, and agricultural sectors work together to support the scientific exploration and expertise needed to answer questions, generate solutions, and capture opportunities that support farmers and ranchers as they work hard to care for the land and feed the nation. So congratulations to all those involved, and we welcome Dr. Silva, and thank you. Thanks very much, Matt. Uh, and thank you again to BCRC and the thousands of ranchers who have stepped forward to support this research uh, that undoubtedly will strengthen the beef cattle industry. And just as a personal note, as part of the recruitment process, we asked BCRC to bring a, a panel of ranchers together to talk to our candidates. And those discussions were fantastic. So Matt, please pass on our thanks uh, uh, to your colleagues for just that great interaction that we had. Our next guest is the Honorable Dan Hayes. As a lawyer, livestock breeder and Canadian Senator, Dan has made lasting contributions to Alberta and to Canada. With his father, Harry Hayes, he developed the only recognized Canadian pure breed of cattle, the Hayes Converter. The better part of his herd was donated to the U of A in 2015. As a Senator, Dan influenced policy related to agriculture, forestry, energy, and the environment. Dan holds arts and law degrees from the University of Alberta, and in 2018 was awarded an honorary doctorate of laws. Both he and his wife, Kathy, are considered longtime friends and supporters of our faculty and the University of Alberta. It's now my pleasure to invite the Honorable Dan Hayes to say a few words. Thank you very much, Dan. I have a text here, and I'll try to abbreviate it as I go along, given uh, the value of time this morning. It goes without saying that it's a pleasure to join BCRC and other stakeholders uh, who have made all of this possible. And uh, I look forward to a very bright future for, for, the, for the investment. This uh, project combines my lifelong interest in beef productivity with that of my alma mater, uh, which makes it all the more gratifying. It was in the mid 1950s that my father, Harry Hayes, an experienced cattleman considered and acted on the idea of a new breed of cattle. Ideally, he wanted a leaner animal that efficiently reached the optimal market weight at the earliest possible age. Over the years, he selected animals from among Holstein, Hereford and Brown Swiss breeds and successfully developed the Hayes Converter. It was a proud moment in 1975. The breed was first issued its first purebred certificate of registration. All good memories. And uh, the role of uh, Roy Berg uh, in the research station and Kathy cannot be uh, underestimated in this. In support of ongoing beef research, it has made good sense for me to donate my remaining herd of ace converter females along with some bulls to their new home at the University of Alberta under, under the watchful eye of the operators and managers of the Kinsella Ranch. In fact, Kathy and I are planning a road trip once calving season is over to check on how the herd, how the herd is doing. We miss seeing the animals, but we don't miss the work. <laughs> As an aside, we have also embarked on an exciting project with a breeder in Brisbane, Australia, 
In the last few years, we have supplied Bromelton farms with Hayes converter embryos. And there is now a solid herd of 130 converters on the ground. With the assistance of Kinsella Ranch, Kathy is coordinating another order for 100 embryo transfers for this year. We are happy to report that the animals have adapted very well to Australian conditions and are thriving. Perhaps another road trip. Uh, thank you again to everyone involved in today's announcement. And Dr. De Silva, we look forward to the time when we can meet in person and welcome you to Canada. Well, thank you, Dan, and thank you, Kathy. Uh, your friendship and your support uh, mean so much to us. It's too bad that road trip couldn't be a little earlier than the end of calving. You know, the snow geese are also migrating in the Kinsella area these days. Uh, all beautiful uh, uh, activities uh, in that part of the world. Well, without further ado, uh, now to introduce the, the BCRC Hayes Chair in Beef Production Systems, I would like to call on my colleague, Dr. Spencer Proctor, Interim Chair of the Department of Agricultural, Food and Nutritional Science. Thank you, Stan. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Glissa Medeiros de Silva. Dr. De Silva is originally from Recife, Brazil, on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. She started undergraduate studies in animal sciences there in 2009. After graduation, she moved to the United States to do her master's with the Range Cattle Research and Education Center at the University of Florida, and her research focused on supplementation and vaccination in beef calves. Her PhD, also at the University of Florida, focused on evaluating strategies to reduce environmental and diet-induced stress in beef cattle. Dr. De Silva begins her role in the inaugural BCRC Hayes Chair in Beef Production Systems at the University of Alberta, July 1st. The focus of her research will be improving the economic, environmental and social sustainability of Western Canadian and calf production and associating grazing management practices and working with beef producers to translate that research into real practical advice. Dr. Silva, on behalf of President Flanagan, Dean Blade, our collaborators in BCRC, Senator Dan and Kathy Hayes, our stakeholders in Cargill and McDonald's Restaurants Canada, our provincial and national beef producers and ranchers, my fellow uh, colleagues in the Faculty of AIS, ALS and Department of AFNS, family and friends that join us today, it really is my privilege to be able to welcome you to the University of Alberta and the Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutritional Science. Please. Thank you so much, uh, Spencer, for the introduction. And thank you everyone for uh, the warm welcome to me. I'm really happy to be here today. I also would like to thank everyone that took a time to be with us uh, this morning connecting. It is my pleasure and I'm beyond honored to be appointed as the Beef Cattle Research Council Hayes Chair in Beef Production Systems at the University of Alberta. For today's announcement, I would like to talk a little bit about my background, some research that I did so you can get to know me. But before I begin, I really would like to take a moment to take the ones that were involved with the creation of this unique position. I would like to thank the Beef Cattle Research Council for investing in supporting uh, the establishment of this position. I really hope you as the chair to enhance the collaboration between the University of Alberta, the Beef Cattle Research Council and the beef cattle industry to contribute to strengthening beef cattle research in Canada. I really also would like to give a special thanks to Dan and Katie Hayes for their significant assistance to the Canadian beef industry by uh, offering support for the creation of this unique position. The Hayes family has a long story uh, associated with the improvement of the cattle industry. And I really believe that the efforts like this one that they have been doing uh, can really make a real positive impact uh, in the lives of beef producers and the society in Canada. I also would like to thank the other donors for this position, Cargill and the McDonald's Restaurants of Canada for providing support. I really appreciate the efforts the industry has been done uh, to support the beef research. I also would like to, to give a special, a special thank to the University of Alberta, the Faculty of Agricultural Life and Environmental Sciences and the Department of Agricultural Food and Nutritional Sciences for creating and hosting this chair position. 
Thank you so much for all the support and hard work in handling everything that allowed us to be here today. I'm amazed uh, that I'll be part of this incredible institution that I got to know since I was undergrad and I really wanted to visit the University of Alberta and now I'm going to, to be part of the team. I'm really proud of that. Uh, and I'm really happy that I'll I will contribute to the mission of the university that is to serve the community through excellence in teaching and research. Thank you so much. I also would like to thank everyone that was involved with the organization of this event that made this uh, to happen today. Thank you so much. I would like to spend uh, just a few minutes to talk a little bit about my background and some uh, research areas that I have worked on, and also to talk a little bit about uh, some of my visions for this position. As I was introduced, uh, my name is Glaze Silva. I'm originally from Brazil. I obtained my uh, BS in animal sciences there in my hometown, Recife, at the Federal Rural University of Pernambuco. And uh, since I was an undergraduate stu student, I was highly involved with research in animal nutrition. So I worked a lot with uh, non-ruminants and ruminant animals as an uh, undergraduate researcher. And uh, also during my time as undergraduate uh, student, I had the opportunity to come to the United States for, my, uh, for the first time. And I went to Texas a and University where I, uh, I did an exchange program. And also I had a chance before graduating to come to the University of Florida, which uh, gave me the opportunity to come back for my graduate studies. So in the fall of 2015, I started my master's program here at UF, but at the Range Cattle Research Education Center, which is a research center um, located South Florida, where we have a cow-calf farm. And there we do mostly uh, grazing trials with cow-calf pairs. And, uh, but besides uh, having my uh, master's at the Range Cattle, I did my master's research at the North, uh, North Carolina State University. We had a collaboration with this institution and the trial that I went there to perform was funded by uh, the Cattlemen's uh, Association. So I had the, the opportunity uh, to see to really early on to uh, work with producers to find strategies to, to their challenges. And back at this time, uh, the challenges in North Carolina was to that beef producers, they wanted to precondition their calves, but they needed to do it with uh, reduced labor and that reduced the cost. Uh, because as we know, feeding daily can increase uh, the costs associated with fuel, equipment, labor, and then we designed a project in collaboration with them to evaluate the effects of reducing the frequency of supplementation of recently weaned beef calves on growth and immunity uh, during a preconditioned program. And the studies we conducted would serve as strategies to allow local beef producers to precondition their beef calves with reduced labor and costs, and also to improve performance of those calves. So the, with this research, we could provide strategies to producers on how to reduce the frequency of supplementation, maintaining the same growth rates and immune responses compared to the calves that were supplemented daily. For my PhD studies, as mentioned, uh, I just graduated and I obtained my degree here at the University of Florida, but now at the North Florida Research Education Center, which is the Florida Panhandle. And my dissertation focused on management and nutritional strategies to reduce overall stress and enhance health and performance of beef cattle in different phases of the production cycle. As the management strategy, we invested in the effects of heat stress, which is uh, one of the problems uh, beef producers may face here uh, in South, uh, South United States, especially because we have been facing increased clim climate variability and increased the occurrence of extreme climatic events. Uh, so find strategies to promote well-being in a cow calf operation is critical for beef producers here. Therefore, we wanted to investigate how the use of a simple artificial shade beef producers use here in Florida 
uh, at the most critical months of the summer season in Florida would impact the performance, physiology, and behavior of grazing beef cattle. With the results from those experiments, we understood a little bit more on the effects of heat stress in grazing beef cattle. We believe it opened a more research opportunities here in the south of the United States, especially in cow-calf operations. And the nutritional strategies that we evaluated in my PhD, we conducted a series of experiments to try to understand the benefits of providing antibodies against selected ruminal bacteria as a feed additive for beef cattle on ruminal fermentation, performance, and innate immunity when cattle was consuming high grain diets. And also with the results uh, of those studies, we wanted to develop tools to alleviate the physiological stress caused by elevated temperatures uh, here in the South United States, and also to reduce the metabolic disorders associated with grain feeding. During also my graduate studies, I had the pleasure to be involved in many educational activities that was developed to beef producers, to kids from schools nearby our research center, and also we developed activities to our community. Then being involved and interacting with different audiences has been an important part of my background that I will take to my whole as the chair. In summary, for some of my research I conducted, the main objective was to increase efficiency in different ways according to the challenges uh, faced by beef producers, especially by reducing sources of stress, which we can, uh, by reducing stress, we can uh, improve efficiency um, of beef cattle production systems. I wanted to give you a brief overview of some of my main research I conducted in my background to then talk about some of the ideas for the Beef Cattle Research Council Hayes Chair position. Talking about the near future and linking my expertise as the chair, I will focus on my um, I'll focus on research strategies to produce more sustainable. Uh, beef by finding ways to reduce feeding costs, improving the ability of producers to meet the nutritional needs of cattle using effectively grazing and foraging lands, maintaining our resources for future gener generations, and also to contribute to increase the beef demand. I strongly believe in collaboration and multidisciplinary work uh, to achieve those goals. Then I will seek collaboration with researchers at the University of Alberta, also another institution's industry to conduct, conduct research that will answer many questions from producers and of utmost to deliver feasible science-based solutions to them. Our valuable producers that are connected today, I want to be someone they can reach out uh, as well as I would like to learn and listen from them. As part of my program, an important outcome will be increased communication and technology transfer of beef cattle research at the University of Alberta to all industry stakeholders. Then I would like to contribute to enhancing the exchange of knowledge between academia and the field, which will contribute to enhance the Canadian beef industry. I hope beef producers feel as much excited as I am and that they can reach me as soon as they can. That way we can discuss together the paths of my research program and keep in touch throughout the coming years. I also want to get to know people in Alberta, which are key players in the beef industry. So please feel free to contact me and also uh, don't get surprised if I contact you. One of my goals is to build relationships and meet you all. So do not hesitate and contact me, please. My email is already on the university staff directory, so you can uh, hopefully find my information there and contact me. With all of that, I would like to thank you again for joining us this morning. I'm really happy to be here today, and I hope to hear from you soon to keep in touch and discuss future ideas. Thank you so much for all the support uh, that I have uh, received um, so far. Thank you so much again. Thank you, Dr. Silva. We, you're an exceptional addition to our faculty, and I know that you're poised to do very important work in the years ahead for all of us uh, uh, within Alberta and across the prairies. 
Now it's time for uh, you, our guests, our participants, to ask any questions that you have for Dr. Silva. Dr. Silva, we did receive one question in advance from one of our participants earlier, so I will start with this one, and I know we talked about it as part of your interview process. The question is, what is the beef industry doing to deal with the valid concern of impact to the environment? Your thoughts. Uh, thank you for the question. That is an uh, excellent question. When we think and we look to beef production uh, from the past years to today, uh, we have uh, uh, improved a lot the way we do beef production, and that's amazing. Researchers in the beef industry, they have been working together to achieve uh, uh, many goals. Today, uh, for example, we have been using less water, for example, to produce beef. We have been using less land uh, because we are now able to produce more efficient animals. The way we produce feed crops for beef cattle, uh, it is more efficiently than it was before. Also, the industry is more concerned with animal well-being practices and health, which are important to increase efficiency and reduce environmental impact in cattle. Uh, research has found many ways to produce uh, genetically more efficient animals. And also we have uh, doing a lot of nutritional work. We can reduce nitrogen excretion, for example, uh, which we are reducing the contamination of our underground waters. So that's something really amazing that we are doing with nutrition to modulate uh, and balancing diets to avoid these uh, uh, excess of excretion of nutrients. Also have been learning a lot how to manage our grasslands, our forages. We have learned a lot about the ecosystem services that those forages provide to us, such as it provides wildlife habitat, carbon, carbon sequestration, quality of water, soil health. All of that is due to research and collaboration with industry uh, to make all of that possible. And the way we do beef uh, production is much uh, sustainable uh, nowadays than it used to be many years ago. And uh, the future is that we have uh, much more uh, research and more, much more things to learn to keep improving efficiency and uh, maintaining our resources that are so valuable to us. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, superb answer. I, I think that uh, everyone that's joining the call today uh, just can see the, the breadth of, of Dr. Silva's knowledge and are thinking forward uh, about all the things that are going on. Karen, please go ahead. Thanks, Stan, and welcome, Blazy. I hope you're prepared for the Edmonton winters. That might be a bit of a shock to everyone's system. Um, I'm curious as to what you think might be the, the biggest opportunity for this position and, and your work within the University of Alberta and, and within Alberta and Canada to further beef production? Where, where do you see the biggest uh, bang for your buck, so to speak? Great, that's a really good question. I see a lot of opportunities. Uh, to me, it's gonna be a uh, really exciting challenge to change from, uh, from Florida to Canada and change the way uh, I've been producing beef here to the way it's produced in Canada with different uh, forages, different uh, challenges, different situations. So I see opportunity in all of that, uh, in learning and, uh, with beef producers, uh, how to manage rangelands uh, for beef cattle production, how to maintain those rangelands. And I think that the forage and the grazing contribution will be a really important opportunity for me uh, because I know we have uh, this challenge of uh, feeding cattle during winter. We need to find ways to try to produce that in a more efficient way or to uh, reduce labor during this time and uh, uh, avoid animals to lose body condition score, for example, during winter. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities on that. And I think that's one of the things that I want to, uh, to focus a lot. Thank you for your question, Carrie. Great answer. Thanks. Thanks to everyone for uh, your participation this morning. This was a, a very important announcement for all of us within our faculty and obviously for the University of Alberta. Uh, so just thank you for joining us and taking a, a time out of your busy schedules. And once again, just to express my gratitude to our generous donors, to the Beef Cattle Research Council, to Dan and Kathy Hayes, as well as to our supporters in Cargill and McDonald's Restaurants of Canada. Uh, this is just a tremendous opportunity for all of us, 
And I really appreciate the fact that you've joined us today. Thanks very much. This now concludes uh, today's announcement. Uh, have a safe rest of your day. Thanks very much. Thank you.